You want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day? My book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. DreAllDay.com. Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. Now, these days everybody can share their opinion, whether that be on video or their truth or their facts or their whatever, their life, whether on video, written format, audio format, everybody, literally everybody, at least everybody who has access to the internet can do so. So this video, I want to try to, I want to give a, a tutorial to help everyone understand how you know when you're dealing with facts versus dealing with opinions. And this is an important subject these days because we've come into a world where opinions and facts are kind of getting blended together in such a way by very clever, smart people who know how to blend their opinions and facts in such a way that you start accepting what is technically an opinion, you start accepting it as a fact. And this way people are being deceived, people are being misled in different subjects. It, I think it started with, I really believe it started in the political world, especially with the 2016 election and how emotionally charged that whole whole situation was, even though I don't follow politics, we all know about it because it was such a hot button topic for everybody out there. But it spread into a whole lot of things just in life in general. And for those of you who don't know me, you know, my expertise is not in politics. You know, I played professional sports, but my what I do now, my thought leadership is in human psychology, like the way that we think and the actions that follow those thoughts or vice versa. The actions that we take and what kind of thoughts led to those actions, what kind of mindset, mental game led to those led to those actions. That's what I do. So this is where I want to go with this. And actually, uh, Scott Adams, he wrote a book called what was it called? Win Bigly. And the topic was he used the 2016 election and Donald Trump as a like the canvas for the book. But the book wasn't about politics. It was about persuasion in a world where thought facts don't matter. That was the subtitle of the book. Understanding how to persuade people in a world where you don't have to give people facts in order to move them to action. You can kind of you can learn how to blend fact and fiction, fact and opinion or truth, whatever you want to call it. So here's the thing. First of all. Here's how you know you're dealing with a fact. All right, this is the tutorial part. A fact is self-evident. You know you're dealing with an opinion when people are getting emotional, when people have to state something over and over and over again, when people are um, loading up on evidence slash proof of why what they say is actually true. If people are trying to tell you that something is true or something's the truth, or something is a fact. If people keeps, if you hear somebody saying that over and over and over again, they're usually stating an opinion, but they're just trying very hard to persuade or influence you to accept their opinion. But it is at its heart an opinion. So going back to the first thing I said, a fact. A fact is self-evident, meaning it only needs to be stated one time and there is no counter argument to a fact. For example, I could say right now, as of when I'm recording this, I'm wearing a white Hanes t-shirt. I can say I have tattoos. I can say I am in geographically located in Miami, Florida. Now we could go deeper and deeper on the science of all those things and you could technically argue against, but you get the point that I'm saying here, right? Those are all self-evident. It's self-evident, all of those, I mean, you don't know where I'm at. But if you did know, you would know that I'm in Miami right now. You can see that this is a white t-shirt. There's no, I didn't change the colors on the, the camera or the video, nothing like that. You can see these tattoos on my arms. These are all self-evident truths. They are facts. There's no argument against it. You can't argue that my t-shirt is green. You can't argue that these tattoos do not exist and these are real ink tattoos in the skin. You can't argue that I'm not in Miami, I'm in no Tampa or San Diego or Seattle. These are all self-evident facts mo at least the last one you don't know but i know all right i only have to state it one time i don't have to say it over and over again i don't have to get emotional about it i there's no one who can argue with me about these points i don't have to provide you any supporting evidence or anything about any of this stuff or i mean again with the geographic thing i can go outside and say what city we in right now and say miami besides that one self-evidence is a fact 
an opinion on the other hand is something that people have to usually you hear people saying it over and over and over again especially when it's an emotionally charged opinion for i'll give you an example in a second we'll talk about that thing that got me thinking about this an opinion is also something that these days you'll have people saying and i'm not talking about let me say one more you'll have people saying well this is the truth or period or it's obvious or you're dumb if you don't believe this or something wrong with you if you don't see it you ever hear people saying things like that that's when someone has an opinion that they believe in so strongly that they get angry they get emotional if you don't agree with their opinion but so they try to tell you that it's a fact because we know that opinions are here and a fact is there a fact is something that there's no argument an opinion is an argument if you hear people arguing about a certain point on different sides of a point you know you're dealing with an opinion but then you'll hear somebody who's in that argument say, well, it's a fact. It's the truth. It's obvious. Everybody knows this. You're dumb if you don't see this. It's still an opinion because if you have to argue it, it's an opinion. Nobody argues facts because a fact, if there's a disagreement over a fact, for example, if I said something like uh, Michael Jordan has the highest scoring average in regular season games in NBA history and somebody said, no, he doesn't. All we got to do, we don't have to argue about it. All we got to do is go online and we can look up the stat. And within two minutes, we'll know if this is a fact or if that is factually correct or is factually not. But there's no argument. Like, I don't have to state a case. I don't have to bring up any evidence. All we got to do is pull up one thing is a black and white fact and we know the answer. All right. So there can be a disagreement over a fact, but we can find out what the truth is. And both of us are subject to the fact. Now, we can't you can't look at the fact and see uh, he is technically number one on the list and then say, well, I still don't believe it. No, he's not. That doesn't make any sense. That's a fact. An opinion is something that, again, people are going to keep stating it over and over. And what got me thinking about this, and this is not really about, this is not about politics at all, but as I mentioned earlier, but people say stuff like, yo, Donald Trump's a racist, right? People like to say that. Here's the thing. Trump has put out a tweet. I saw a tweet that he put out maybe a couple weeks ago from when you're watching this, and he was like, I'm not racist. That was basically the long and short. He said more than that, but the long and short of his tweet was, I'm not racist. And then other people said, well, you are racist. The fact that you said you're not racist means you are racist. All right, so here's the thing. And one more thing about facts. Sometimes people will put hashtag facts. That's not what I'm talking about. We'll do that like kind of like tongue in cheek to support our opinion. For example, if I said, you know, Kyrie Irving is the best ball handler in the NBA, hashtag facts. All right, of course, it's an opinion. It's my belief, what I think, but I'm not saying it's actually a fact. When we say hashtag facts, that's just like a, it's like a saying. It, we're not necessarily saying it's a fact. So hopefully y'all are mature enough to understand what I'm saying there. On the, let's say the Trump side of things, people say, well, it's a fact, it's the truth, or they have proof. There was a guy on some, I think CNN, one of these shows, not even seeing it. NBC, one of these networks, they brought this guy on as a black guy. And he was like some kind of researcher and professor, et cetera, et cetera. And he was allegedly supplying the, the proof, the factual proof. And he was given definitions and referencing old texts and things. He was saying the proof that Donald Trump is a racist because of these things. He was like trying to technically state his case. And of course, whatever network he was on, they were on the side of, yeah, he is racist. That's why they had this guy on the show. And that's another thing that's crazy these days that the news networks who are supposed to be objective have picked sides and everything. So you shouldn't even listen to the news because they're not telling you the actual facts. What they're telling you is a little bit of fact and actually a whole lot of opinion blending in with enough fact that they can defend themselves by saying, well, these are facts. But anyway, that's a different conversation. So this guy's making this argument that Trump's a racist because these things, he's like technically breaking it down. And I remember listening to this guy talk and I'm thinking to myself, well, if they got to bring on an expert on TV to break it down and make it technical and explain to you why it's right, it's not a fact. See, a fact is something, again, is self-evident. And anyway, when you're calling somebody, let's say something like racist, unless they admit it, and they say, yes, I am racist. But if there's any argument, any reasonable doubt, or they're just coming out and saying, no, I'm not, that's, that's an opinion. Racist is an, is an adjective, right? It's a describing word. You could describe somebody any way that you want, but if they disagree with that description or anybody disagrees with that description, then we know that you're dealing with an opinion because there are two sides to it. Opinions have multiple sides. Facts don't have any sides. Facts have one side. And there's nothing that you can say against it. Again, we can just go to the black and white proof and it's there. There's no black and white proof that a person is a certain type of person. Somebody could say, well, Dre is a really nice guy. And somebody else could say he's not a nice guy. It's an opinion. 
I can think I'm a nice guy, but if you think that I'm not, it's an opinion. Again, I can have my own truths to that I believe, things that I believe, just because you believe something doesn't make it a fact. It just means that's what you believe. It just means that's what you think. It just means it's your opinion. And the reason why all of this matters is because these days, as I said at the top of this video, there are a lot of really, there are a lot of people who are really, really smart. They're really good with words, whether that be the written word or the spoken word. And they have a, a high level of skill when it comes to blending opinion and fact. I'm not saying fact and fiction. Because fiction would mean they're telling you something that's not actually true and they know it's not true, but they're doing it on purpose. There are some people who do that, but I'm saying at a higher level, there are people who have their own opinions or the opinions of whoever they're working for or whatever cause they're trying to push. And then they take some facts and they blend them together so seamlessly that when you consume it, you can't tell that this is an opinion. It seems like they're just giving you factual information. And what makes it crazy is that the news networks are doing this now. Journalists are doing this now. Reporters are doing this now. These are people who we grew up to know all these years up until the era that we're in now. We grew up to know these people as these are the people who just tell us objectively what's happening. The news is just supposed to tell us what happened. This happened. This person said this. This is the result of it. This is what we expect to happen next. That's just objectively telling us what went on. That's the news. Just reporting what have a reporter just reports what happened. Nowadays, the news networks and the journalists and the reporters, they're not only telling us what happened, but they're they're bending the what happened part. They are telling us what happened, but they're blending in with it what they think about it. And they're blending in with it how they want you to think about it. So, for example, I mean, it's been so many examples and I don't even follow news, the news. I don't watch the news. I don't follow any news networks online or anything, but I still see these things that like CNN or NBC or any of these networks, they'll post or newspapers, New York Times, they'll post headlines, like headlines that supposed to just tell you what happened and they'll make it sound whatever way they want you to think. It's like they're trying to control your opinion and the way that you see things based on their opinion. And that's crazy to me. I mean, this is not a, a new phenomenon, at least not new as in like the last week. It didn't just start happening, it's been happening. But that's absolutely crazy to me. And the reason that I, because, and the reason why they're doing this is because they pick sides. They decided, oh, I don't like Trump, or I don't like, or somebody might decide they don't like Democrats, or somebody might decide they don't like a certain politician, or they don't like a certain race or nationality of people. There's all these, I mean, we know all the hot button issues that people have been arguing about these days. Even if you don't follow it, you know it, because the, the shit is so big that it just finds you, even if you're not looking for it, right? The reason why this matters so much is because what we really need to preserve in our world, I think, I think it would be good for the health of all of us is people who are wise enough and discerning enough and i'm hoping you're in this group or at least you want to get in it to be able to see what is being said read what is being written hear what's being spoken and discern the fact from the opinion to understand that even though someone may be a quote-unquote credible source because they work for cnn or they write for a certain newspaper that doesn't mean that what they're telling you is the fact. They may be mixing in a little bit of what they think, their own opinion, with the facts that they are giving you. Because again, people can't just come out and give you a whole bunch of opinion and tell you to accept it because you can see it as an opinion. You can see right through that. But see, when you mix a little bit of fact with a little bit of opinion, now you can't, it's hard for people to tell the difference, especially if you're good with words, you can make it seem like you're giving people all facts and when it's not all facts. And so that's why I'm saying all these things that I'm saying here in this video that hopefully some of you are willing to be in that group and you want to develop your skill of discernment, which is just being able to look at things and tell what's what, maybe not what it's trying to present itself as, but what it actually is these days when you're dealing with other people. And this is a skill that has, this skill extends far beyond anybody arguing over politics or not liking the president or any of that, any of that bullshit that I don't even pay attention to. It, this goes into just dealing with people in general, dealing with information as you if you want to build a business, if you want to get into a certain career, you're going to be coming across all kinds of information. I mean, how many videos are there on YouTube right now with people like me sitting in front of a camera and telling you something that's in their mind and they're trying to get you to accept it 
you have to develop the skill of discernment of understanding who knows what the hell they're talking about and who's talking a bunch of bullshit just because they got a camera and a YouTube account. That's a skill that you must develop and nobody's going to, nobody's going to you know, come in hover, hovering above you and say, well, that part's true, but that part's not. This is a skill that you got to have on your own. And if you don't have this skill, what happens is you're going to get, you're going to get taken for a ride, as they say, meaning people are going to get you to accept their opinions as your opinions and it could not turn out well. It, it, it might be too late by the time you finally realize, damn, what such and such was telling me wasn't actually what was going on. It was their interpretation of what was going on. And if I had known that, I would have thought about it differently. I wouldn't have accepted it so easily. And I might have a different opinion. I might have taken completely different action. So that's why the skill of discernment is so important. And your ability to separate the fact from the opinion, even in, within the same sentence, <laughs> somebody's giving you a little bit of fact and a little bit of opinion or a lot of one or the other you got to be able to tell all right all right this part is the actual truth but this part is not and that's a skill and it it's developed by first of all the most important thing for you is paying attention you get caught not paying attention somebody's going to insert some opinion and fact into you and you're not even going to realize that they weren't even telling you the actual black and white they were telling you a little bit of a little bit of the gray from their own personal interpretation. So anyway, that's my thought on that. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.